Okay, let's talk about working with DNS zones and records in Windows Server. Now, I've got a server up and running, so I and it's running as a domain controller, and I've got a child domain, and that's what's generating the errors here. Um, it's a service on the child domain controller that hasn't started yet. So I'm going to start by opening up my DNS server, uh, con my DNS server management console. So tools, DNS server, or DNS. And this gives me my DNS server information. Now, um, go ahead and maximize this. This is managing the local DNS server, and so far I have not done anything with DNS other than what was done when I promoted it to be a domain controller. So Active Directory re relies heavily on DNS for name resolution. So it has created a forward lookup zone for me, IT146.local, and then a subzone, MSDCS, IT146.local. And this zone, this is Microsoft Directory Controller Services. So the IT146.local is going to be the center. This, by the way, is an Active Directory integrated zone. And so here I have service records for my primary domain and my child domain. And then I have my name server record, my uh, resolution for that, for the domain, and then my server too. Now, all of this stuff was created automatically when I promoted this thing to a domain controller and then created the child domain and created the, a domain uh, controller for that as well. This is an Active Directory integrated zone, which means it's automatically going to manage records. So when I join devices to the domain, this zone will automatically update with that information. So I need to do very little to this unless I want to set some static records. Now, I can create additional zones in here, and we're going to do that in a minute. But I also want to show you this. This is our forward lookup or reverse lookup zone. So a forward lookup zone is going to take a name, in this case, server2.it146.local, and it's going to resolve it to an IP address. A reverse lookup zone does the opposite. It takes an IP address and resolves it to a name. So I'm going to create a... Another forward lookup zone, and I want to create a reverse lookup zone as well. So I'm going to right click forward lookup zones and I'm going to create a new zone. And click next, and I can choose which type. So a primary zone, a secondary zone, or a stub zone. A primary zone, this is going to be a zone that I can uh, directly access from the server. Secondary zone means that I've got a copy of this zone somewhere else, and the zone is just going to be a bunch of records for my DNS. Uh, the secondary zone will basically create a copy of the uh, primary zone, and I'm going to direct uh, directly update things on the primary servers. So this is done kind of for load balancing and fault tolerance. And then I can choose where I want to store this. By the way, stub zone creates uh, or only holds NS records, start of authority records, and glue records. Um, the idea is the stub zone is not authoritative. It points you to the servers for that actual zone. So stub zone basically is like a way of directing traffic that comes to this to the correct zone. And then I can choose to store this in Active Directory if I want to. Um, this is not always available. Notice it says it's only an option if the DNS server is on a writable domain controller. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked. So this sets my zones types. This is what I want if I'm creating a new, uh, new zone for new name resolution records. This is to add a secondary one for load balancing and that kind of acts to direct traffic to the right location. So most of the time, what we'll find out for our first, for creating a new zone with new uh, records, we're going to want a primary zone. So I'm going to click Next. And then because I told this thing to store an Active Directory, this defines how it's going to be replicated to Active Directory. So to all DNS servers running on the domain controllers in this forest, to all DNS servers in this domain, to all domain controllers. I'm going to go ahead and say all DNS servers, and I'm going to click Next. Now, the other option, by the way, is to store it not in Active Directory, but in a zone file. So I'm going to set the domain name, and I'm going to create an alternate domain name. This is going to be 
demo.local because I don't feel very creative at the moment. So I'm going to create a demo.local, and then I can define how I want updates to happen. So dynamic updates, this is what we need if we're supporting Active Directory. So allow only secure uh, dynamic updates. I can also choose to allow both non-secure and secure dynamic updates, but this creates kind of a security vulnerability. My other option is no dynamic updates. Now, if I do this, I have to manually put in all the records that I want it to hold. And in this case, that's actually what I want to do. Um, think if I'm doing an internal DNS to manage name resolution in my local network, this makes a lot of sense. If I'm managing it for outside, if I'm setting up a DNS zone for outside name resolution, so clients trying to, or not well, remote clients that are not part of my network trying to find servers or resources in my domain, then I'm going to do do not allow dynamic updates because I want to have direct control over that. So that's what I'm going to put in and finish, and that creates my demo.local forward lookup. So notice I've got a start of authority and a name server record. So demo.local is being managed by server2.it146.local. Now, I want to also create a reverse lookup zone. So this is going to be for reverse lookups. So somebody has an IP address they want to find the name associated with. That's what I'm going to use a reverse lookup zone for. So I'm going to right-click and create a new zone. It's a very similar thing. Primary, secondary, subzone, store, and active directory. Um, how do I want it replicated? Same thing we saw before. And then I, here it's where things diverge. Do I want this to resolve IP1? V4 addresses or IPv6 addresses. And I want a V4, so I'm going to leave it there and click Next. Now, I need to specify the network ID. So and here I'm putting in the IP address that um, I'm going to want to do reverse lookups for. And so this, my IP address on, let me actually bring up back to Server Manager here real quick. If I go to configure this local server, I'll see my IP address range of 10.1.1.11. So that's my IP address. My network is going to be 10.1.1. So if I want to do reverse lookups for this network, it's going to be 10.1.1. And then here's going to be the reverse zone name. I can go ahead and leave that, or I can change that. Not really any reason to. And then again, how are we going to do uh, updates? So dynamic, uh, secure, dynamic, secure, and non-secure, or no dynamic. And I'm going to do no dynamic here. And I'm going to click Next and Finish. Now, this creates my reverse lookup. So now I have a demo, re a demo zone and a reverse lookup zone. So let's say I was creating a website, a web record for www.demo.local. Now, practically speaking, this would not be a .local, but it could be, right? I could be running an internal website on a .local domain, but you might be doing this for an outside uh, website, a publicly accessible web address with a com or edu or uh, org or some kind of top-level domain like that. It's going to work the same way regardless of what the domain na name is. So I'm going to right-click and create a new record. Now here are several different types I can create. An A record is a name to an address. Quad A is the same thing, but it's for IPv6 addresses. A C, uh, C name is an alias, so it resolves a name to another domain or another name. Uh, mail exchanger identifies an MX record, and then we've got other types of records we can create too. So mail exchanger, MX records, this is how we find uh, mail servers. So I'm going to do a simple host name here, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to put my web server, it's going to be on something called Web1. So I just put the name, notice it automatically puts the .demo.local because that's the zone I was in and I started creating this. And I'm going to resolve that to 10.1.1.11, which happens to be my IP address. Now, if I want to create the PTR record, that's here. Now, the PTR, this is a pointer record. It's going to be created in the reverse lookup zone. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Host. And that adds my A record. Now I'm going to come back to this in a minute. But now I have web1, 10.1.1.11. So if I go to my command prompt 
and I ping web1.demo.local, it will resolve to 10.1.1.11 because that's what I created here, and it'll ping it and it'll work just fine. Now, if I look in my reverse lookup zones, I now have 10.1.1.11 is a pointer record to web1.demo.local. That's what happened when I said, hey, create the reverse pointer record. Now, let's say I wanted to be able to use www.demo.local. Well, at the moment, I can't resolve that. So what I'm going to do in this case, and I could do change this to a www, but what I want to do instead is I want to create a CNAME record. So a CNAME is going to be an alias. So I'm going to create a new alias, and it's going to be for www, and again, notice it automatically populates .demo.local. But here, instead of setting an IP address, I'm going to set a name, web1.demo.local. And this alias then will allow me to use www, which will resolve to web1.local. I'll look up web1.local, it resolves to this IP address. I should be able to access this IP address using www. So let me ping www.demo.local. And notice I pinged www. It says pinging web1.demo.local. It's because it looked it up in the DNS server, found the CNAME record, and then went, looked up that fully qualified domain name, and then started pinging that. Okay, so that was real quick. I created a forward lookup zone, a reverse lookup zone, and then I created a couple of different record types. Now, remember... If I'm setting up a mail server, I need to use an MX record. Um, I can set up multiple addresses. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. That will allow me to uh, use DNS to handle some load balance. And we're going to talk about that in another video. So there's your introduction to configuring DNS zones and records in uh, Windows DNS server.